Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Dan Barker. And I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. Dan and I are co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, a national association of freethinkers, atheists, and agnostics working to keep state and church separate. We'd love to have you become a member at FFRF.org. Kristen Lems has been a troubadour of feminism and many progressive causes for her entire life. She's a well-known Midwest songwriter and performer, also a lifelong freethinker. Welcome to Free Thought Matters, Kristen. Thank you very much. I'm so pleased to be here, so honored. And we go way back. Yes, we do. I think uh, three or four decades mm -hmm. now. I met you back in the late 80s when we did some early recordings together. That's right. Some for FFRF and some for your that's right. Your projects uh, and that. Uh, yes. But you knew Annie Laurie back when? In the mm. well, early 80s we met. Mm -hmm. But Kristen, yeah. I saw you performing in the 70s at many national events for um, the Equal Rights Amendment, for abortion rights. Mm -hmm. you were, That's you, right. In many venues, in many uh, rallies in <laughs> Chicago, Springfield, D.C., uh, Peoria, many other places. It was really... Uh, uh, oh, and also outside the uh, the Mormon uh, Tabernacle. Tabernacle, yes. In Salt Lake City. <laughs> yes, yes, we had a big ERA rally there. Now, I didn't see you there, but I saw you at the great rally in Springfield in the late 70s because the state of mm -hmm. Illinois had not ratified the Equal mm -hmm. Rights Amendment. There was a national rally there, and all I remember was you on that stage <laughs> with your long flowing hair singing, We Will Never Give Up, waves and waves of women joining you in the chorus. Thank you for remembering that. That's a special moment to me, not only because of the historical importance, but because I had written the song in the car on the way there. <laughs> Lori huh. Haig, who was my bass player, was writing down the lyrics furiously for me, and it made its global debut right there, and it just was so mm. magical. Mm. We were, yes, and we were all singing it, and we never, we didn't know you had just written it, but it became the emblem of the, the fight for the Equal Rights Amendment, which of course yeah. we lost, at yeah. the, uh, but we are still not giving up quite. Yeah, I remember singing it at a National Now convention, and um, all these women were working so hard on ratification, and in the morning they all came staggering out and said, we will never go to sleep. We will never go to sleep. We will never rest again. <laughs> Do you sometimes feel like we're just fighting the same cycle over and over again after the decades? Very much so. And uh, each new generation has to learn what's important and then how to fight for what's important. So you can't assume that is just transmitted through DNA. You, it's through education. Huh. So you've gotten a lot of awards, including from the Freedom from Religion Foundation, Thank the American so Humanist Association, feminist groups. But I remember the plaudit um, by Gloria Steinem, who introduced you on the national stage at one of the, the National Organization for Women mm -hmm. rallies. Do you remember what she said? I think <clears throat> it was shortly after I wrote the song Mammary Glands, which was a spoof on America's breast fetish, where I say mm -hmm. it's only a natural mammalian site. And uh, Gloria Steinem said that Mammary Glands had reminded her that the women's movement had a sense of humor yeah. and embodied by me and my song. Well, so many of your songs do embody the feminist movement. Thank you. Well, and they're light, too, and there's a certain, you're right, there's a certain humor to them. Even on a song so dark as Days of the Theocracy, you managed to put well, a lilt in it, you know? We, the topic yeah. is dark, but the song is all yeah. humor. You've got to remind people that uh, it can be different, huh. and we can make it different, and look back in wonder, and <laughs> look at the things that we had to deal with a few decades ago, and... So you also are, are covering the gamut. You do a lot of environmentalism, a lot mm -hmm. of environmental songs, progressive songs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, progressive and, uh, I mean, environmental has gone to the top of my to-do list, so to speak, because uh, we want a planet that we can live on. And, and that we uh, can leave our descendants. Yes, yes, and all the species on it. Um, <clears throat> so I do everything I can. I take trains instead of planes whenever I possibly can. I use public transportation instead of a car whenever I can. And, uh, you, and you know, have a hybrid car? Yes, I have a hybrid. <laughs> you drove yeah. up here from Chicago. Unfortunately, with, yes, with a because we don't have good mass transit. But that was th disappointing. Thanks to ex Governor, Governor Walker. Yeah, you <laughs> said there was one Amtrak a day to a place 19 miles from Madison. 
Yeah. So, but um, you know, you have to stay on top of issues. I am a bit of a news junkie too. I listen through many media. I, I look at Twitter. I don't tweet. <laughs> um, you know, you have to know what's happening, what's bubbling up, and, and be part of it. So I, I did actually write a funny song recently. It's not recorded on any of my albums, but you can find it on YouTube called Like a Duck, because so many people were saying, well, um, a tyrant does this and that and the other. And if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And comparing it to the behavior of uh, the chief executive. So I thought that I should have a funny but dark description. You're of saying he's a quack? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There used to be a magazine called Cracked, as uh -huh. I recall. Yeah, the descriptions of what tyrants do and then just holding it up to the present moment. Uh -huh. So, yeah, my mother said, oh, that's just too dark humor. That's too dark. People will think that it's too fun. And then when they listen, I said, Mom, that's the point. Kind of like Tom Lear, you know, yes. so long, Mom, I'm off to drop the bomb. Yeah, satire. Yeah. So you've also um, performed with Jacques Cousteau, for example, speaking right. of environmentalism. That One must have been a moment. It was one of the great honors of my life. I'll never, never, uh, that will never dim in time. Jacques and Philippe, his son, um, they held something called the Great Lakes Environment Day. This was in the 19, uh, late 1970s, no, mid 1970s in Milwaukee. And um, my performing partner and I were on the bill and uh, it was just a stunning experience. We sang my song Cuyahoga River and Jacques Cousteau told us how much he liked it and how much it meant to him. So and it was very special. I, I didn't know, you, you were a, a kind of an intern or protege or w accompanied Malvina Reynolds, the great yes. folk singer who wrote Little Boxes on the Hillside. Yes. And how did you meet her? I met her through the National Women's Music Festival, but I had corresponded with her too. She was a great letter writer, which Pete Seeger also was. I have a file of handwritten letters from Pete Seeger and handwritten letters from Melvina Reynolds because that was how we communicated back then when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. And um, Melvina came to the National Women's Music Festival where I got to know her very well. We started a lively correspondence and um, she had written a new tune about a judge, I believe, in Madison. In Madison. Here in Madison, Wisconsin. That's right. Um, judge Archie Simonson. Archie Simonson, who was yeah. defeated. And she took in a the words of Johnny Come Marching Home and wrote this dramatic song about we got out this petition and we're going to dump the judge. And That's we right. did. Yes. And yes. my mother wrote that petition. Really? Yes. And oh. I called for the first rally that got international coverage, including in Time Magazine. Wow. And so when we were not at that um, concert, but when we heard that song, it was just. Yeah. heartwarming and I had no idea you were accompanying her. I played on the piano, piano behind her when she sang that song in Madison and Milwaukee. It was a very short little mini tour she did. So, so before today's um, show you recorded a song for us uh, about some of your inspirations if I can use that yes. word. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the song? Yeah this was my trinity. Your trinity. Uh, so I call it the three Madonnas, Judy and Joni and Joan. People that are more or less around our age undoubtedly know who these three women are, all musicians that had a tremendous impact on me. I started listening to Joan Baez, Judy Collins, and Joni Mitchell mm -hmm. in the 1960s and into the 70s, into the 80s, and they were extremely influential on my sense of identity that I could write songs, perform songs, and change hearts and minds through music. And so this song, Judy and Joni and Joan, talks about uh, their influence on my life, and then each one in particular having a slightly different impact on me. So instead of WWJD, it would be WWJJJD, <laughs> right? 3J. <laughs> well, so let's listen to the song. Let's What's the name song. of it? Three Madonnas? It's called The Three Madonnas, or Judy and Joni and Joan. It's on my Equality Road album. I had three models when I was young. What a great crowd I traveled among. It's time that their influence on me was sung. Judy and Joni and Joan. It was the best of times, the worst of times too. We all did the very best that we could do. But through tears and fears, their voices rang through. Judy and Joni and Joan, both sides now amazing grace. 
place. Chelsea morning shining on my face. Diamonds and rust all over the place. Carry me home. I found Joan first, met her through some friends. She wore no makeup and a peasant dress with a voice of such worldly innocence. Judy and Joni and Joan. When I came across Judy, she was sweet but strong, looking deep with Judy blue eyes into what was wrong, and raising her voice in a tremulous song. Judy and Joni and Joan, both sides now amazing grace. Chelsea morning shining on my face. Diamonds and rust all over the place. Carry me home. Joni was a case unto her own self. Magic musings and tunings and endless wealth. With her paintings, her poems, and her mysteries to delve. Judy and Joni and Joan. We were folk singers all, and the novice was me. I listened and learned from them faithfully. The three Madonnas were my trinity. Judy and Joni and Joan. Both sides now amazing grace. Chelsea morning shining on my face. Diamonds and rust all over the place. Carry me home. Joan Stark, my desire to sing out for what's right. Judy said, a touch of elegance can bring delight. Joni winked and said, be yourself. It's all right, Judy and Joni and Joan. Three strong women, three lives so true. Three voices in the storm, three hearts true blue. Now I raise mine in thanks to the three of you. Judy and Joni and Joan. La 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 la, la la la, la la la. La 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 la. when I was young what a great crowd I traveled among it's time that their influence on me was sung Judy and Joni and Joan Judy and Joni and Joan singing me Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. I'm Liz and I am an atheist. I was raised as a Catholic, but my family was not terribly active in church. And my mom really pushed me to achieve in school. So as a result, I got a great education and I've always been a critical thinker, an avid reader, and a skeptic. I gradually questioned religion until I finally realized that whether I want to or not, I can't force my mind to believe in any gods. When I look at my two sweet little kids, I feel strongly that the only things that matter in life are how we live in the present and how we leave the world for our kids. Life is short and you have to be true to yourself. I enjoy and savor life 
I love my family, I am a good person, and I am an out-of-the-closet atheist. Welcome back to Free Thought Matters. I'm Dan Barker. I'm Annie-Laurie Gaylor, and we're continuing our conversation with folk singer Kristen Lems from Chicago. And Kristen, how many songs do you think you have written? Oh, gosh, um, definitely in the neighborhood of 300. 300. Uh, because I do keep track of them um, in this Google Doc, and uh, I just did a line count the other day, and it's like 287. <laughs> and how many albums? You have a number of albums out yeah, there. Yeah, I have eight recordings, um, including... Some, some well, of the album titles are... Yeah, um, well, the very first one was Oh Mama, and then when I re-released it as a CD with three bonus tracks, I called it Oh Mama Plus. <laughs> and that's got mammary glands and uh, another song that... Um, Farmers? Yeah, farmer, farmer. Far the, I'm, I'm not a, the, call me a farmer and not a not farmer's, a farmer's wife. wife. These are yeah. very famous songs. About the inheritance tax that discriminated against women farmers. That was still the case when I lived in Champaign-Urbana in the 1970s. And um, then the second album uh, and third album have been recombined into a double CD called Equality Road, mm -hmm. which has a lot of the songs. There, one of the albums is live, sung at uh, the closing ERA rally for mm. um, the first uh, round of the ERA. And it has a lot of uh, topical material, including Days of the Theocracy. Yeah. And then, um, let's see, my fourth album was on uh, Flying Fish Records, and it was called um, uh, Born a Woman, more feminist stuff. I've got a lot to say <laughs> about women and women's rights. It's kind of inexhaustible. Then the one after that was um, my sharing Children's tape which, and book. That song goes through my head all the time, oh. especially when we have our grandchildren over. An <laughs> album so for ch children's music. Yes, yeah. yes, children's music. And I got to play piano in that one. I yes, remember. you sure did. That and was uh, fun. you know, that's when I became a mom, and I kind of transformed into a day routine, singing in the daytime for different uh, venues where children were present. My old nightlife was kind of cut back by that. Mm. And then as my children got older, uh, I sort of segue gen gently back into music for adults. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, I remember uh, In the Outdoor, was that the name of an album? That was number two, which is now in Equality Road. Oh, it is, okay. Yeah, and then um, one called Upbeat, which um, right. had some very good topical material about uh, the AIDS crisis and um, you can't beat a woman. That's no, right. you can't. Um, and then, uh, let's see, <laughs> then yeah. the one that I did with you, um, the my thoughts are my free. My thoughts are free. free. That's, yeah, right. that's right. Dan that and I a... did that together. A lot of uh, songs together well, and alone. It was yeah. a wonderful project. And we'll hear one of those in a few minutes. Or... Yes, that's right. Kind of a theme song in oh, a way. Yeah. But you have a whole other life, Kristen. Which um, you're a professor yes. of English as a second language. Uh -huh. I teach teachers about ESL and bilingual education at a university in Chicago. And you've had and two Fulbright scholarships. That's right. And you were yeah. where? Um, my first Fulbright was to Algeria, where I taught teachers about English as a foreign language, and I was there for two years. So I got to know Algeria pretty well. And, and, sing, then, and you sing some songs in Farsi. Yes, but that's from Iran, oh, where I also lived. Um, actually, at the time I lived in Algeria, they were just transitioning from speaking French to speaking Arabic. So most of the time I spoke French there, not all that much Arabic. Um, but, uh, and then just a couple of years ago, you got another Fulbright. That's right, and that one was much shorter, but um, I went to Mongolia in uh, fall 2013. Amazing, amazing experience, amazing country. I think since it's so high up, the day went from, let's talking about the winter solstice, <laughs> it went from very long to very short, like within the three weeks I was there. Wow. It was almost, you know, Northern Lights, no day at all by the time I left. Right. Incredible. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Now, Amazing. your children follow in your footsteps in terms of their interest in language. And yes. what I think is remarkable is that your son has the same Fulbright scholarship <laughs> yes, that you do. Does. You did yes. in Algeria. Yes, my son is a Fulbrighter in Algeria right now. And um, it's just so delightful and ironic. I'm saying things like, you know, um, did you enter from this building in the Polytechnique? <laughs> because we've been in some of the same buildings. Of course, the teachers I taught have all retired by now, but maybe some of their kids are being taught by my kid. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. 
Wow. So and my daughter is involved in arts administration, very interested in the arts and world music, and um, she's about to do that in Hawaii. And uh, so I'm very, very proud of them. They love to learn languages and they love to learn instruments. Um, my son just went to um, Niger and he bought something called a jimbri, which is this long three-stringed instrument that's kind of played like a bass in Central Africa. Um, I, I love, they teach me every day, they teach me, and I hope I teach them a little bit too. So do you come from a musical family? Your mother was a pianist, right? Yes, my mother was a performing concert pianist before she gave birth to me. She was on the stage in Grant Park, Town Hall, Orchestra Hall. Uh -huh. um, and really she's 94 and still giving lessons, yes, which she I is. think is amazing, on yeah. a Steinway. <laughs> yes, we have the Steinway in her small independent apartment in a senior place. And she has two pupils that continue to come every week for lessons which is pretty cool. But then my father also was very musical, one by note and one by ear. Huh. My father couldn't read a note of music. He picked up everything by ear, kind of honky-tonk stuff. He's, he was Dutch. And when the Americans came in and liberated Holland from the Germans, there were a lot of uh, GIs there that were playing in the bars and so on. And my father and his two brothers would go in there and listen to them and picked it all up. Hmm. So he, he could play anything by ear, and so can my two remaining uncles. So Dan can play anything by ear, but yes. he can read notes, too. He knows so what you, he's playing. So you said your dad was a Dutch <laughs> free thinker. He never was a believer. Or That's right. Know. Yeah, the whole family had many generations of free thought. There was never any religious training or mention or indoctrination of any sort. Now, I think that most people could not claim <clears throat> that they can go way back generations <laughs> um, in their family claiming that they're not religious. And you said yeah. that your father, this is true uh, in, yes, in the Netherlands. No religion and no discomfort with that. Just completely natural person. She can go back three generations, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. On your just, side of just the Just that I know. So ah. you can go back generations. Yeah, and generations. yeah. And then my mother's father had was a child of Orthodox Russian Jews, and he denounced religion and wanted nothing to do with it. So he was a dentist. He believed in science and nature, and he uh, really hated orthodoxy, and so he inculcated that in my mother. Mm -hmm. So my mother was also quite a free thinker. Now she would call herself a, a, a Buddhist, if anything. But um, they, she sent me to the Unitarian Church uh, for the church, uh, the, what do you call it, the, the religious education there, which was basically learning about nature. My father used to joke that um, it was the only church he'd ever heard of where I would come home from church having dissected a fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the Unitarians are a religion with no creed. Right. You can be a Christian or a Jew or an atheist and still go to that church. But Very they're so. humanistic, Humanist, which you yeah. are humanist, And nature of lovers and lovers yeah. of science, and I feel very comfortable with that. Well, there's a lot of FFRF members who are Unitarians as well, so... The uh. Unitarians also have a lot of folk coffee houses. I got to give them credit. <laughs> oh, for your music. Yeah. Oh, if you there you go. Play music, uh, and you're looking around the country. Start with the Unitarians. Uh -huh. Now you did meet and correspond with um, Pete Seeger, mm -hmm. and I think that is where you learned the free thought anthem "Die Gedanken sind frei." Yes, yes. And can you tell us a little bit more about you introduced us to this song, and we're going to play it. You and Dan play it in a minute. That's so wonderful. I'm so glad that. I could transmit that to you because I think it's an important song for your work and for people who hear it. It was a, a protest song in favor of free thought uh, many centuries ago in Germany and has been used uh, throughout time, also in the most recent past. Um, in the resistance. In the resistance correct. against Nazism. And what does Die Gedanken sind frei mean? means literally my thoughts are free. Or the and we, are free. And originally we sang it wrong. We said Die Gedanken <laughs> Sind, S-I-N-D, but in Germany they told me it's supposed to be Zint. Die Thank Gedanken. you for correcting that. <laughs> I didn't know that. We were saying it wrong this, yeah. this whole... Yeah, well, we got to do it right. If we're going to sing in another language, we... <laughs> but, of course, it's just the, the words, Die Gedanken sind frei. The rest has been translated. And it's, I know yeah. I, I, I remember there's a number of English translations of it, and the original words in the English translation were, no man can deny, but you changed it. Right? Got to be... Of gotta, course, yeah. no one can deny. <laughs> or no person. No or, person. Gotta do it, yeah. No person. And yep. the song, the melody goes back to um, the 1500s, is that right? 15, Way back 15th to? 15th century. 15th century. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it was even uh, performed by the resistance in Nazi Germany by people who were saying, my thoughts are free, no tyrant, no dictator can tell me. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of free thinkers live their lives. I'm going to think mm -hmm. for myself. Exactly. And, and that's how you've lived your entire life. Don't tell me what to think. Huh? And uh, you construct your thought through experiences, reading, talking, and, and deep thought. And uh, even those thoughts evolve as you learn more. So for example, we didn't know a lot of things about the flexible systems of living systems on the earth and we know more about them now. And you add that to your understanding of the miraculous ways in which nature works and evolves. And it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to construct your own thoughts, to have your thoughts be free and no one can take them from you. Yeah. Well, we are, um really looking forward to playing that song in a minute and in, in, if you were to wrap up your views on humanism what would you say um, open your mind learn and uh, don't be shy about sharing what you've learned with others free thought is something to be proud of and to share and uh, and maybe it will save the world. Maybe it will save the world. Well, yes. thank you, Kristen Lems. It's been thank a pleasure you. for these few minutes and for these few decades getting to know <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. Die Gedanken sind frei, my thoughts freely flower. Die Gedanken sind frei, my thoughts give me power. No scholar can map them. No hunter can trap them. No person can deny. Die Gedanken sind frei. No person can deny. Die Gedanken sind frei. I think as I please, and this gives me pleasure. My conscience decrees this right I must treasure. My thoughts will not cater to duke or dictator. No person can deny die Gedanken sind frei. No person can deny die Gedanken sind frei. And should tyrants take me and throw me in prison, my thoughts will burst free like blossoms in season. Foundations will crumble and structures will tumble, but free people shall cry, die Gedanken sind frei, and free people shall cry, die Gedanken